Well, coming up on today's show, the Aston Martin Rapid E. C'est bon! The Model 3 is heading to Paris. And Californian EV drivers getting unstuck with their stickers. Well, first of all, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Thursday, the 13th of September edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Thank you to the team over at myev.com. They help me make this show and they've built the world's first marketplace specifically and custom designed for buying, selling and learning about electric vehicles. If you haven't checked it out, if you're not buying and selling but you just want to learn about EVs. Uh, check out myev.com. We'll kick off with some news in brief. And Tesla is enabling free supercharging for those in the path of Hurricane Florence and unlocking some of that battery capacity which the drivers and owners might not have paid for. Thank you to one of my listeners who emailed me a screenshot of what it is saying for those in the area. Their screens are reading this. We are temporarily enabling your car to access additional battery capacity as well as free supercharging in preparation for Hurricane Florence. We hope this gives you the peace of mind to get to a safe location and we'll notify you before returning your car to its original configuration mid-October. Well, a date for your diary, or rather, ten dates for your diary, for the Jaguar I-Pace e-Trophy Racing Series, coming soon to support Formula E. It kicks off December 15th in Saudi Arabia, then heads to Mexico, China, Italy, France, Monaco, Germany, and finishing off in New York, USA. And I cannot wait to see those I-Paces racing. Well, BMW said it's discontinuing any diesel models for the US market in 2019 and moving to plug-in hybrids as a way to improve performance and lower emissions of the cars they make, like the X5 and the X3. They're going to join Mercedes, Audi, VW and Porsche in totally dropping diesel in the USA. Well, Crescent Electric has been studying 52 different markets and they've named New Orleans as the cheapest place to charge and drive an electric vehicle. It's all due to low electricity costs, you see, and a, sh a slightly shorter commute. Whereas Seattle, well, that makes the biggest saving for those moving from fossil cars to EVs. And surprise, surprise, an ongoing survey of 654 EV owners and drivers by Flip the Fleet in New Zealand says that EV owners are the happiest car owners they survey, with 77% of all drivers scoring their cars a 9 or a 10 out of 10, loving the driving experience, the low running and low maintenance costs. Well, getting into the news proper, if you like, for today. Uh, we now have more details from Aston Martin about their tow-in-the-water first electric car. Now, I call it that because they're only making 155 of them, and we'll come back to that number, 155, in a moment. Uh, but they're not holding back on the specs, so it's not really a tow-in-the-water in terms of they're taking things softly. They're going big. There are two teaser images released online. We know it's going to have a 65-kilowatt-hour battery driving two rear motors, that's good for about 200 miles on the brand new WLTP test cycle, which is more realistic than the NEDC way of measuring, which is now been and gone, which was very optimistic. Aston Martin are building the Rapid E for speed. 155 miles an hour is the top speed, and that's why they're building 155 of them, you see. 0 to 60 in under four seconds. They are redesigning the current Rapid S to make it more aerodynamic with less resistance to maximise range. Andy Palmer, the CEO of Aston Martin, said this, and I quote, environmental responsibility and sustainability is a global challenge faced by us all. As a career automotive engineer, I'm proud that the car industry is leading the way in finding long-term solutions and reducing harmful emissions. As Aston Martin's CEO, I take particular satisfaction working with Williams Advanced Engineering and other, other, other associated technology partners to bring Rapide E to reality. As our first all-electric production model, Rapide E will fast-track our knowledge and help us ensure the character and high-performance capabilities of our future EV models and enhance the unique qualities found in all Aston Martins as we know them today. Rapide E will also serve as a critical step on our path to relaunching Lagonda as the world's first zero-emission luxury mark. The first deliveries should be quarter four in 2019. Well, the Model 3 
is heading to Gay Paris. We're counting down to the Paris Motor Show from the 4th to the 14th of October. And Tesla now has a page on the official Motor Show website. La mission de Tesla es de accelerar la transition mondiale vers un energie durable. That's as far as my high school French lessons got me. So I very quickly hit the English button on the website. Oh, by the way, that's Tesla's mission statement, but in French. Uh, So I didn't have to bust out Google Translation. Don't worry, the website did have an English version. It says this, at the Mondial Paris Motor Show 2018, Tesla is showcasing a Model S, Model X, and Model 3. The Powerwall home battery will also be on display. This will be Model 3's second appearance in Europe before deliveries start in the first half of 2019. Model 3 reservation holders will be informed about pricing and information specific to Europe at a later date. End quote. Well, Elon Musk has tweeted previously that the Model 3 would be in right-hand drive form by summer 2018, sorry, 2019, and it appears that target is still being aimed at. The Model 3 made its first official visit to the UK this summer at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, which is where I got my first up-close and personal look at a Model 3. (sighs) Very hard not to put a £1,000 deposit down. Right, moving on, and for the 200,000 Californias driving EVs and plug-ins and hybrids. Make the most of your carpool lane stickers. NBC Bay Area said this. A change is coming to California carpool lanes. In just a few months, 200,000 drivers will lose the stickers that allow them to drive in them solo. It all depends on which electric or plug-in vehicle you own and how much money you make. You see, drivers who have a hybrid, a zero emission or an alternative fuel vehicle are going to need a red sticker to be in the carpool lane if they're driving alone from January. Current solo drivers with electric or plug-in hybrid vehicles have a green or white sticker, which allows them to drive in the diamond lane. But from January 1 next year, those stickers are going to expire and will affect about 230,000 drivers in the state. I'll put a link to that article in the show notes. Well, whilst the overall Chinese auto market fell last month, August 2018. EVs, or new energy vehicles, if that's the proper name that I should give them if they're Chinese, continued to rise in double-digit increases. Total vehicle sales were 2.1 million. It's just a massive market, just to remind you. It's huge! 2.1 million vehicles in August sold, if you include the trucks and the buses, according to data released by the China Association of Automobile Manufacturers. And even though sales of passenger cars from sedans to SUVs were down, the bright spot, as always, remains, well, you guessed it, you're listening to an EV podcast, I hope the punchline is, it's EVs. In August, sales of new energy vehicles soared 50% to 101,000 EVs sold in August alone. Production jumped 39%. To 99,000 units, according to CWM, reports Shine.cn. Well, sales of electric vehicles added about 32% to 73,000 units, while 28,000 plug-in hybrids were sold in the month, a jump of 138% uh, from a year earlier. In the first eight months of the year this year, new energy vehicles have surged 88% year-on-year. So far, 601,000 EVs have been sold in China this year. 601,000 EVs have been sold in China this year. And production of uh, new energy vehicles is up 75% year on year. And all the usual suspects in China are driving that, by the way. BYD, SAIC, Geely, and Cherry. And these are all names that you might not know. I bet all of them have got plans to be selling their EVs in the West if the other manufacturers don't pull their fingers out. Well, let's stay with China. Can I talk about Shenzhen again? You know I have this love affair with Shenzhen, a city of 12 million people linking Hong Kong to the mainland. And since they made a commitment in 2009 to go all electric, there are now 17,000 all electric buses there. That's their entire public bus fleet, all of them running on electrons. And yes, we know China burns a lot of coal for electricity. We know that. About 72% of their entire power generation as of 2016 figures. But because they're more efficient to run an EV bus than a diesel bus, even if you charged it wholly on coal-powered electricity, it would still be better. It's about 48% CO2 savings by running your EV buses. 
off the grid. Well, according to statistics from the Shenzhen Municipal Transportation Commission, uh, the 2017 data shows total reduction of CO2 to 1.3 million tonnes of CO2 saved. Furthermore, the annual emission of pollutants like nitrogen oxides, non-methane hydrocarbons and particulates reduced by 431 tonnes. It's according to the itdp.org. The key as always in these cases, has been government support for better public transport. So wherever you live around the world, if a government department asks you to submit your thoughts, don't presume everybody else will do that. Just take five minutes to have your say, because it really is about government support to get these EVs moving. China has a bigger problem than most, actually, in terms of the daytime peak and the nighttime low. It's it's exaggerated in China um, for power, and that's exactly when the EVs buses charge of course overnight and so it helps balance the grid too well getting a tesla gigafactory or even a fremont factory tour would be a dream for me i'd love it i mean not that i spend too much time in nevada or california but i would do if i, if I was getting a tour uh, and investors from worm capital were fortunate enough to get one of the investor tours around giga in nevada and they've released a note with their observations the internet got pretty excited today with the um investors headline which was that a battery cell cost of a hundred dollars per kilowatt hour is going to be achieved by the end of the year which is what they were told and i think it was news to them so they released it as news and then everyone grabbed hold of it as news it's not news by the way elon's said this publicly openly in the past i think the most recent time was at the shareholder event yeah that would be a little while ago actually when he on stage he said a hundred dollars per kilowatt hour at cell level by the end of the year yep confirmed that seemed to be news to a lot of people uh today it really isn't uh the most important number though is pack level and if you can get the pack level with all the ancillaries and all those kind of things down to a hundred dollars per kilowatt hour well that's when price parity with fossil cars really kicks in that elon says will be done by 2020. So if you see a headline in a few weeks' time about 2020, it's not new news either. Well, the report did say, however, that Giga One was the biggest producer of batteries by volume in the world because they say 200 million batteries are produced every quarter. Well, they mean 200 million cells, uh, don't they? Uh, a current annual rate of 20 gigawatt hours. Yeah, that's quite a respectable amount. Uh, now, this research note also... Now, I'm not picking on these investors, by the way. The investor note also said that there's new automation coming from Groman Engineering. I'm not being picky, but the automation is coming from a company called Tesla Groman Engineering. Since Tesla acquired them, they re named them pretty quickly afterwards. So the company is actually called Tesla Groman Engineering. Yeah, you're right. I'm just splitting hairs now. But if you're going to do it, get it right, okay? And specifically, they say it's going to speed up and lower the cost of module production. So that current bottleneck, right, which is for Model 3, the paint shop, hence the streamlining earlier this week of losing a couple of colours to speed that up, it was previously the battery pack production so this will ensure that pack production doesn't become a bottleneck issue again that's also important because the tesla semi which starts production in 2020 is said to be using the model 3 battery packs stacked well moving on and a story from earlier this week i just didn't have time for on an earlier podcast tesla are moving towards in-house body shop repairs and i got forwarded a link to a post on a tesla motors subreddit from the user e k o b r e s and this user on Reddit uh, tells a little story, so I'll pass on the highlights. And he says this, or she says this. Today, my Model 3 was courteously picked up, repaired, and delivered back to me within nine hours. The Atlanta Body Shop is headed by an experienced, dedicated Tesla manager who cares deeply about the mission, the customers, and the cars. He takes pride in what Tesla represents and strives to provide excellent service. In my case, I noted a panel alignment issue at delivery contacted service to schedule getting it fixed and the service manager told me if i could wait a few weeks i could have the work done by this new tesla body shop rather than have them send it out to an authorized shop well he showed up uh, showed up at my work this morning with a loaner had me sign a couple of forms and left me with the car he texted me when my car arrived at the shop he texted me to let me know they were correcting it he texted me to let me know they found a frunk latch issue that was out of spec to ask by permission to fix it and then he texted me to let me know the car was ready and met me with it washed 
and vacuumed. A few minutes later, I was back behind the wheel of a fully sorted Model 3. Tesla spent a fraction of what it would have cost to coordinate and hire a third-party body shop and a rental loaner, says this Reddit user, and the car was fixed by a knowledgeable Tesla employee who cares about their mission and their customers. I am impressed. Well, the Tesla body repair centers are springing up now for light repairs. They're in Washington, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Eatonville, Florida, uh, Houston, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, Marietta, Georgia, Maryland, Van Nuys, is that how I say that? In California, and Villa Park in Illinois. I'll put a link to the Tesla website to go directly to the body shop page if you're interested. And finally, some news of another big name in car manufacturing getting into EVs with experience from Formula E to supercars. Ricardo has unveiled a new E-axle transmission. They say it's the best mix of efficiency, performance and cost. As any EV driver will recognise, they're making a single speed transmission. And for Ricardo, it's only the first of a range of products to cater for a rising demand in electric vehicles. They say this. Capable of accommodating both high torque and high input speeds, this advanced modular EV transmission will be revealed at an LCV event today, Wednesday, which was yesterday. The E-axle can be used in a wide range of installed orientations and is equipped with high strength, lightweight aluminium casings, ideal for direct integration into space constrained environments. With our new E-axle, we're offering a highly adaptable solution that's going to provide a cost-effective way of delivering high-quality electric traction to the road. Looking forward to supporting customers from established automotive industry to EV startups, they say, with a flexible product. I'll put a link to the uh, Ricardo website in the show notes if you want to have a look at their e Lines page. Thank you very much for all of your comments on yesterday's dilemma that I am facing. My wife needs to buy a new car. Obviously, it's going to be an EV, and so we don't know what to do. Normally, we buy used cars, and there's a really tempting 0% finance offer from BMW at the moment, which tells me, as I'm a cynical old git, it tells me you don't get anything for free. And obviously, even though it's a four-year 0% finance deal, it's still finance. But it tells me they want to get rid of some stock because it's only available for cars that have been built. And that tells me there's a new BMW i3 coming. And that's, by the way, me putting two or two together and getting five. But why would you do a very attractive finance deal, but only for cars that you've currently got sitting around, produced, unsold at the moment? Maybe, maybe there's going to be a bigger battery pack announced soon for the BMW i3. Maybe it's going to be about 44 kilowatt hours. Maybe it'll be... 120 amp hours. I'm just picking numbers out of thin air right now. We'll see. So that was very tempting. We've never owned a new car. It'd be a very, it'd be a massive treat for us, by the way, uh, for her. Uh, or I think what's most likely, we're going to buy a used EV for her in the next couple of weeks. Or well, there's a few independents around the country. Eco cars being the one that I always want to give a mention to because they do incredible work. It'll be interesting. I'll keep you up to date with how that goes. Talking of used EVs, if you are lucky enough to be listening in North America, well, then you can use the resource of myev.com. Who set this week's question of the week? And I need your comments, please, on this question. Where do you get your information from when considering buying or researching things like EVs, charging, incentives. Is there a new site you always use or do you go to the automaker's official website pages? Please tell me, how do you research when buying an EV? Well, thank you very much to all 74, no, 78 patrons of this podcast who help make this show and support the work that we're doing to spread the word about EVs and sustainable transport to those all around the world who are EV curious and hopefully persuading a few of those to buy electric cars as well. By no means do you have to go and check out the Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Thank you very much for listening. As always, there's 233 free episodes of this show on all the usual places, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, and the blog, which is evnewsdaily.com. You can subscribe on YouTube and on the podcast. It means you get it first and free and automatically. If in return, you can leave a review... Ah, now we're talking. It would mean the world to me. You can also catch me on the socials, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Just search EV News Daily. I should come up at the top of your search. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.